we are now on pretty much air, we'll just say. Hi guys, and welcome to this edition of Wrestling Fan Reaction Extra. Thank you ever so much for tuning in as always. Today, obviously, we've got a special episode for you guys right here on Podbean. It is no other than our AEW Revolution predictions towards the very pay-per-view this is happening this very coming Sunday, the 7th of March 2021. This week we've actually not one, not two, but three guests. And first and foremost, we've got Gary Frett coming back on the podcast. How's it going, Gary? Ah, it's going great. Feels good. Husky Hero is back. The big bad Husky Daddy, aka Errol Husky Miracle. We're back. Feels good to be back. Thanks, dude. All right. Yep. No worries. Yeah. And then we've got no other than Anthony from Rated R for Wrestling uh, YouTube channel. How's it going, Anthony? Hey, Gavin. Thanks for having me back, man. Appreciate it. No problem. And then we've got a newbie, a fellow Brit from Shropshire. I'm trying to pronounce it in an American way. I do not know why. But he's a young, up-and-coming talent on YouTube. I can't thank him enough for coming on. He's no other than Cameron. How's it going, Cameron? Hey, Gavin. It's good to be on for the first time. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're welcome. And obviously, we've had a uh, pretty much a get-to-know-each-other before. And... Um, yeah. But obviously, before we get into things, how did you actually get into wrestling in the first place then, Cameron? Uh, well, for me, it, it was like, it goes back to a long time ago. Well, when I, I was at a young age and uh, I'm not sure, like probably around like the age of about maybe about five or six, maybe onwards. And uh, I just really, again, got more like into wrestling when I got older. And also my dad um, liked wrestling too. Like he was a fan of wrestling. And I really uh, just, I don't know, I just sort of got, you know, attached to it. And uh, I just um, found it believable as well. And just, it, I don't know, it was just, um, yeah, just, I just really, you know, grew into it more and, uh, and yeah, and it's it's one of the the things like like I said that I've uh, that I've had like a big passion for. I'm, I'm you know I'm a passionate wrestling fan, and you know and and yeah, and so uh, yeah, I just you know I I've liked wrestling you know pretty much nearly for you know but probably about you know over you know fourteen years or so. Well, since I was young, you know a very well a long time, but yeah, so. Yeah, any particular favourites? Uh, you know, yeah, I'd probably say you know Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, John Cena, uh, The Rock, AJ Styles. Um, you know, like yeah, John Moxley, I like as well. I've been a fan of him since you know he was in WWE. Well, when when he came up with the Shield in two thousand and twelve, and uh yeah there's a lot i like you know randy orton as well is another one so yeah that, that, that they would probably be my my favorites so so you got different variations there from obviously grappling to obviously a bit of high flying <laughs> bit of everything so which is a good thing to actually have in the wrestling fandom which which is a good thing to actually have that instead of one strict favorite because it, it gets yeah. boring when you watch the same favorite obviously yeah when you grow up to watch and appreciate wrestling more, you adapt to more, which is a good thing. And you've got a good range there. I'm not going to complain. So no, that's what I mean. It's like today, obviously, I feel like going into this very pay-per-view this coming Sunday, I think it's going to be an exciting pay-per-view for the internet fan base more than the casual fans or the casual haters because they're going to hate on it. But I feel this is pretty much going to be a stack card and it's pretty much i'd say oh that's had to put it in a nicer term thrown in our face this is what we're here this is what we're doing that's how that's how i feel about it but going into is the thing is with the buy-in obviously they usually have the casino battle royal this is pretty much what we're going for but obviously the first match they talk about was the tag team battle royal to have a future tag team ch uh, title ch uh, championship match down the line. Who do you think is actually going to win this one? And I'll hand it over to Gary Frett. All right. Thanks, Gavin, for bringing it to me. Uh, for as the Battle Royal goes, um, 
all of the teams are announced, right? There's nobody like outside of AEW going to be in the match. Am I correct? As far as I know, I've, all I've noticed is what is what everyone else knows. All oh. I, all <laughs> I can see is <laughs> that's what I mean. It's pretty much what we got at the end of the taste of what we had at the end of um, Dynamite two nights ago. My vote is for... See, it all depends on who they would face. I'm basing it off of who's who they're going to face as far as like if it's going to be MJF, Jericho, or the Young Bucks. Yeah. I, I think... The inner circle. So my pick is Santana and Ortiz. Um, they're going to win the uh, Battle Royal, and that's going to further, you know, break up the inner circle, I believe. Nice. I like that storyline aspect. And for you, Anthony? Um, yeah, it's a good pick, Santana and Ortiz. I think if there's rumors about Enzo and Cass coming into the company after they debuted on Impact, um, you know, like an Impact show... Wow. Um, so I, I could see them making a surprise appearance, not saying that they'll win the match, but I could see them showing up. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody from the Dark Order wins this, because I feel like they're going to want to push the Dark Order since they're associated with Adam Adam Page. And since the stuff, you know, the passing of Brody Lee, I think they want to showcase the, the group a little bit more. So they might give them a spot here to win this Casino Battle Royal. Um, you also have, I mean, there's a lot of different teams in this thing. You have Private Party. They could go with them again. Butcher and Blade. If I had to pick, I'd probably pick some form of the Dark Order uh, to win and 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 win the Battle Royal. I just think they're going to get a shot in the arm here because they I think they do want to push them just a tiny bit, being as they're associated so much with Hangman Page right now. I just think I'll pick whoever from the Dark Order. So if it, I, I believe um, Silver and Reynolds are in here, and so are, are Evo Uno and, and Stu Grayson. So I could end up seeing Silver and Reynolds probably win this one. They, I, th- I feel like they want to push Silver a little bit because he's he is pretty entertaining. So I could see them winning it. And you, Cameron? Um, I'd probably actually say like what Gary said. I'd probably say Santana and Ortiz just again because it will drive more of a wedge, you know, in the inner circle, and I think that could play off really well. But I think that Private Party, I think they've really, again, you know, I think they've got a good chance to win this thing as well. You know, with Matt Hardy now and. I would say, yeah, but I might just, I'll probably go with Santana and Ortiz. Yeah. My pick, I was actually going to pick Private Party. The only reason why I wouldn't mind seeing that is because I actually saw the match online between uh, Private Party and the Young Bucks when they actually had that tag team match. And I thought it was great when, I actually, when they bigged them up on social media and everything before they came in. And I won't mind seeing that on the mainstream side of things towards the title and give it none. Because people were moaning about AEW not promoting young stars, but they're promoting the young stars in the likes of Private Party. They they signed for a reason. So I can see them future-proofing themselves going in that direction, as well as obviously the same way someone like with the Dark Order. That's what I mean. With this Battle Royal, you don't know which way it's going to go, which is a good thing because when I when most people say, oh, wrestling so predictable, you could go one way or another with AEW, which is a good thing. But it's like when you've got someone like the Dark Order involved in the... I wouldn't mind Butcher and the Blade, to be honest, to give them a shot, because they've not, I can't recall on top of my head the actually had a title shot, so give them a chance as well. So that's what I mean. It's so wide open, but me personally, my personal favourites... Uh, at the moment, our uh, young talent is no other than private party. So the next match we want to talk about, because we don't have any official word where these matches are going to lie or sit towards the card, that's why I've listed them the way I have, is pretty much a big money match between Hangman Adam Page and Matt Hardy. I would hand this one over to Anthony to start this one. How do you think this one's going to go? Uh, I think Hangman Adam Page wins this one. He's been on, on a bit of a winning streak, and I don't know. It's just like the stipulation really isn't that interesting to me. Um, you know, I, I believe it's whoever loses has to pay the other or has to give up their their first quarter salary uh, to the other one. So, I mean, there's probably going to be a lot of um, interference and a lot of, 
you know, hoopla thrown into here, into this matchup. But I think Hammond Page is the guy that like to win. I don't Matt Hardy doesn't need to get these wins. Um, he's an older guy. He's just there basically to put the other guys over. Uh, it's going to be a solid match. I just think there's going to be a lot of interference from the Dark Order, from Private Party. Maybe TH2 shows up, you know, since he had uh, Jack Evans interfere in that in that, that ladder match qualifier on, on, on AEW Dynamite. So I think Adam Page wins this pretty, you know, simply. And I think that's just pretty much it. Um, and I don't really see the point of Hangman actually losing this and how the story can have, actually progress that entertainingly if he does lose. So I, I pick Hangman in this one. Yeah, and you, Cabo? Uh, yeah, I think I'll probably say Adam Page as well because, like you said, he, he, you know, he needs to win more than Matt Hardy does. And I just feel that, you know, I just, yeah, I just think that I can see Adam Page, Hangman Adam Page winning and uh, with what's been going on but like you said uh, like you said Anthony I think there is going to probably be interference like from the dark order and probably from private party as well but I think yeah ultimately I think that the win's going to go to Adam Page and you Gary now based on what Anthony said as far as the tag team match as far as that dark order push I- I'm going to go with uh hangman i think dark order is going to have something to do with it. they're going to be like you know the little x factor or like they're going to back up adam page and say hey adam like you know you need us you know you've been on this link streak because of us join the dark order so hey, i'm going with hangman yeah. Because, Seem- yeah yeah that's what i mean it seems like unanimous towards obviously this decision obviously yeah. hangman but you never know with AEW, they might swerve the curveball that matt hardy wins it and he gets all pissed off, and he's turning more of uh, you know, because it, and the, I've seen this since like day one with like Hangman Adam Page's character is drinking a lot, but I feel like he could do like a where he's completely drinking a lot, like do a depression route to relate to obviously people going forward. But that's what I mean. It's with me, I won't mind having Adam Page winning to be honest on that one. So that was a unanimous. United decision. And then obviously the next match we're going to be talking about is Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy versus Miro and Kip Saban. I'll hand this one over to Cameron in this tag team match. How do you think this was going to go down? Uh, Well, I reckon from what's been going on, I reckon I'm probably going to say Orange Cassidy and I think Chuck Taylor are going to win this tag team match, I think, just because... With what's been going on with Miro and what he's been doing to Chuck, you know, what he's been doing with Chuck Taylor and all that. Like, I just feel, I just, I don't know. I just think that I can just see Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy, you know, winning this. And, you know, it's been kind of weird for Orange Cassidy because, like, you know, he's, you know, not been getting a lot of wins. He's not been doing too much, you know. So I feel like this would be more, I don't know. I can just see this, you know, going to, to them winning this uh, tag team, uh, this tag match. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to predict uh, Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor to win. Okay. And we'll hand this one over to Gary. Uh, honestly, for me, I don't even care. I'm tired of this whole little feud. Uh, I've been sour on, you know, best friends since, you know, Trent got hurt. Unless it's, unless it's going to be well, I'm going with Miro and Kip with Chuck taking the taking the pinfall. Then, you know, Orange Cassidy is going to get revenge against Miro. That's going to lead to, like, a bigger match down the way. That's the only way I see it going. Uh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm more of this little few. I, I really want to see Miro be the beast that he is. He looks great with the promos. Um, I'm, just, I'm just going with uh, Miro and Kip for the fact that it's, we're going to see Orange Cassidy kind of break out against Miro and beat him later on. Yeah. And for you, Anthony? Yeah, I'm going to go with Miro and Kip Sabian. Miro cut the promo on Dynamite about how the games are over and he's not, you want to see a different side of Miro. Um, Because, like, the way he's been booked since he's shown up there has been lackluster. He's had a couple high spots uh, where he's, you know, you know, shined a little bit, but for the most part, he just hasn't been the guy you thought he would have been when he sh- when he got to the company. What he's doing with Kip Saving right now really isn't that interesting. Um, they, they both stream, so they bring that the video game aspect a lot into their stuff, and it, it's kind of corny. It doesn't really come off that well. 
Uh, the wedding stuff wasn't really all that great. Orange Cassidy is another guy who, after this feud with Chris Jericho, has really fallen off. And I think it's just because the character that he is was overexposed. Not saying that he's not good in those in what he does. It's that the character is better served as something you don't see as much of because it is such an interesting character. And I think they just overuse it a little bit too much. And that's why he's fallen off a bit. So I think Miro orange will happen after this match, but I think Miro and Kip Sabian take this one. And I think Miro has a do- really, really dominant showing because I have a feeling that they may start pushing him more in a, either a singles capacity or get this team maybe into the tag team title picture. But I'd rather see Miro go on on his own after this, but I think Miro's going to have a massive showing and in the end, I think Miro and Kip Sabian take this one over Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Yeah, that's the thing is, I think the reason why Orange is there is because of the way Trent is basically out injured. I think that's why they've just shoved him in this middle of the storyline, even though he was intertwined it with what was going on for the wedding and so on. But me personally, I think Miro and Kip has got to get this one because he's just going to snap. I could actually see the likes of uh, Orange Cassidy doing his comedy routine and everything. Don't get me wrong, he is funny when he does it. And I've actually seen him in a few other matches doing that with bigger guys or smaller guys. But it's going to be interesting how much he's going to make it like Submero because obviously he's a monster heel and we've known him for years being doing that in um, the likes of WWE in the past. And I think this will make him sort of snap because he's sick of seeing the comic book character. I'm sick of see yeah, like the way you guys have been saying that about the games and the streaming situation. I think the only reason why that's intertwined because that's a cheap dig towards I feel personally towards WWE because the band superstars for in WWE for streaming gaming situation. That's why I think they've only intertwined that in this sort of gimmicks the way they're portraying. But it'd be interesting to see how this goes down. Or you could actually have it on the other turn that you have the likes of Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy getting the victory, Miro losing his rag and then snapping at Kip, setting them for a match probably down the line. So, but honest honest opinion, I feel like it could be Kip and Orange Cassidy just the way I've just pretty much mentioned to you guys. So, next match we want to talk about is obviously the face of the revolution ladder match. Future TNT Championship match opportunity. Who do you think is going to have this one? I'll hand this one over to Anthony. Um, so they still have the mystery guy, and I think the mystery guy might be have to do with Paul White's um, big announcement of the major yeah. talent that he's signing. I just it, it, it makes sense because why have two surprises on one show? Um, and, you know, one guy's gonna outshine the other. So depending on who Paul White chooses and depending who they put in here, one guy might outshine the other. So I think it has to do with Paul White's decision. But for me, the person I think should win and would be the right call would be Scorpio Sky. Scorpio Sky has been a guy that should have been one of the up and coming faces of AEW and his since his since he went on his out on his own and had the match against you know Cody for the TT championship, um he's been so stop and go. He had this random feud with Scorp- um with um you know uh, Sean Spears that was dropped quickly. We haven't seen him on TV much. He's been on TV then he disappears for a while. It's just like the way AEW is right now, they're just dropping a lot of their storylines midway through and guys disappear and then they come back and reappear. Uh but I think Scorpio Sky is the guy in the match that makes the most sense to win and I think he'll benefit the most from it and it can, you know, catapult him if they keep him on TV afterwards, um, you know, eventually becoming a TNT champion. Because I think the TNT championship right now doesn't really fit that well on Darby Allen for me. I think Scorpio Sky is a, a guy who benefit more from the, from that title. And I think it just it'll be a, it'll be better if Scorpio Sky rather than Darby Allen. Because Darby Allen to me is a guy who doesn't really need a belt. And him with a belt is just kind of odd. And it doesn't really fit well. But I think Scorpio Sky will benefit the most from it. And um, he'll probably end up elevating the title and finally become like one of those up and coming faces of the company, which we thought he was going to be. Uh, but then with the whole stop and go booking, we just haven't seen since. Yeah. And I'll land this one over to Gary. Gary. Oh. You there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. So uh, I would go with uh, I, I I don't know. Like a part of me wants Scorpio Sky. Like I don't, I, I don't know. 
I think I think only time I don't know. Based on who's in there, a part of me thinks uh, Lance Archer. I think I got Lance Archer. I got a feeling they're going to push him to the moon. And uh, with the matches he's been having lately, he had a good match with uh, Ray Phoenix. Yeah. I got a feeling they're going to go with Lance Archer. And then maybe later on, he's going to drop the title to somebody, like a Scorpio Sky. Yeah. I, I think whoever they're going to bring in... Whoever Big Show recommends, that's the person that's going to feel Scorpio Sky to give him, give him a push. I don't think that AEW is 100% sold on Scorpio Sky yet. What? That That's why I think that. So um, we'll see from there. But I'm more curious to find out who Big Show is recommending, who's going to sign. So that's what I'm more curious to see rather than the winner. Yeah, that's what I mean. We'll talk about that later on. Don't worry. And over to you, Cameron. Uh, yeah, like I agree with you. Like the big show's going to have, I think, you know, again, a, a part to play in this as well. But yeah, I think again, I'm going to agree with Gary. I, I definitely think Lance Archer has been looking, like I said, like a, a monster right now in AEW, and I feel like this would be, you know, a really good, you know, time for him to win in this ladder match here. I just think, you know, he could do with, 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 you know, with becoming you know, the TNT champion and, and like, you know, I think taking it from Darby Allen, you know, I, I could definitely see that happening. Yeah. So I'll probably go with Gary. I'll say Lance Archer, I think, you know, wins, but again, it depends, like you said, on, on what the big show again is going to, you know, to do with this, with whoever again it is that what he's up to. But uh, yeah, I'm going to say Lance Archer is going to win this ladder match. Yeah. My pick, what I've actually seen from what's been confirmed, who's actually making his return, is Pentagon Jr. Because with him, yeah, he was dominant when he was the way he's working with the likes of Ray Phoenix. He's one of those rare talent that I feel that can work good singles matches, as well as I've been watching him since the Lucha Underground days. And him and Ray Phoenix work great as a tag team, as well as obviously as a singles competitor, but I would love to see the likes of uh, Pentagon Jr. versus Darby Allen. That would be just a clinic of a match because I'm pretty partial to high flies, especially when they take them out of risk as they actually do. It's just insane. Absolutely insane. But the next match we're going to be talking about is the AEW Women's Championship Championship match. Sorry, I got a bit tongue-tied is Shiller versus that Raiho. I'm not trying to go say her name. I'll hand this over to Gary because I think he knows how to say her surname. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> you know what? I'm learning uh... Japanese names. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be you, uh... New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's about Ryo Mizunami. I would have said mayonnaise or something. No, my luck. Yeah, Rio Mizunami from um, Emmy Sakura's uh, promotion at Choco Pro, which is very, very weird. <laughs> yeah. um, I got a feeling Rio would, she's going to win. She's going to win. They didn't have her beat Aja Kong, which is a legend. They didn't have her go through the people that she went through just for her to lose. Um, Especially, they had her beat uh, Nyla Rose, and that was a hell of a match they had mm -hmm. on um, Dynamite. And uh, Hikaru Shida, she needs a yeah. change. She needs a change, you know? Um, there's other people who needs a shot at the belt. And even if Hikaru loses, she's still going to put Rio over. They have a history from Japan. And Rio actually did all the booking for that the women's tournament that they had, so... I got a feeling that it's a safe bet that Rio's going to get it um, yeah. from Hikaru Shida. And also, as they're going to build back a Riho, eventually, like, it's used to Riho to Rio Mizunami match. So, yeah. and um, they're already passed, Alja Kong passed the torch to Rio. I, that's why I got the win. Over to you, Cameron. Uh, yeah, I think, again, I, I agree with Gary. I think you've got to, you know, say Rio, I think, is going to win this uh, and become, I think she's going to win the tournament and I think she'll become the new AEW uh, Women's Champion. And, yeah, I think I'm quite confident that, that Rio's going to win. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to say I'll, I'll pick Rio, I think, for this one. I'll go with Rio as well. So is it Rio or Rio? 
It's R Y O Ryo. I can never Ryo or it's yeah. I'll go with Ryo is silent. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to pick Riho, I think, is going to become, yeah, I think she's going to go on to win this, like Gary said. So, yeah, I'm quite confident that I think she's going to win. So, yeah. Over to you, Um, This is an interesting one, because I felt like Britt Baker should have been in the spot um, instead of um, Rio. So it it just would have made more sense to me for Britt Baker to be there, because she's an you know, actually like on the, the AW shows, uh, you know, for the most part consistently, uh, she's the best character in the show. She's the best entertaining in, in the women's division. So I, I think it should have been her. So that's why I think, uh, Sheeta holds on here. Uh, you know, for Mizunami to win, she's not really on AW Dynamite. So now she would have to start showing up more on AW Dynamite and being a constant figure on AW Dynamite for the other women to face her. So I just think, logistically i don't really think it makes a ton of sense and i just think she was probably just going to end up holding on here and i feel like it's it's ended up being kind of wasted i just feel like i don't know why they haven't decided to push Britt baker in that sense um or even put thunder rosa in this role you know for me the nwa women's championship feels more important than the aw women's championship and um i just yeah i just think carl she is going to hold on to it here yeah that's what I mean. It's like when, when I've looked at actually the build to this, I've not watched the Japanese side of the bracket, but I know Gary has uh, delivered. It's like with me, it's like I'm a mix of emotions because it's like with the Far East sort of Japanese style, the people do watch it because I know full well it's over on the internet. But the problem is with this, it doesn't transition that well when it's on American broadcast. I just feel like because of the commentary, don't show that much passion as the way the the Far East show their passion, if you know what I mean, towards the commentary, the storytelling. But I'm not disrespecting the two women. I'm really intrigued because after seeing what the likes of the competitor that I'm going to not try and say the name, but I've seen what she actually did this past week and I was really impressed. And I, to be honest, with the likes of Nyla Rose, I was really surprised what Nyla actually put on a really good show, you know. I feel like t- I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Twenty twenty one, I feel like you know, the women's division because it's slowly progressing. This year, all of a sudden, they've shape shifted and they've gave women a spotlight, longer matches, and they've had great matches in this tournament. I was skeptical when it was announced. I think Gary was the first one that told me uh, about this before it all came about. So thank you ever so much for Gary, but. I'm just saying this. This is going to be an interesting match to see how this goes. I personally hope that it delivers and shows the world that AEW can say, okay, fair enough, we've got a good women's division. And I would love it should to win this, to face someone like down the line for the title. Because she's actually, with that match she actually against Ryho, that delivered. That was so hard hitting, so great storytelling everything and i would love to see at some point her get revenge at some to get that title that she wants now she's pretty much with the company now she's not with nwa if i recall but i would love to see shiller to win this coming sunday night i'm really looking forward to seeing how that pans out then we'll go on to the next match with the street fight with sting darby allen versus Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. I'll land this one over to Cameron. Be honest as possible, if you can, please. Because a lot of people say that Sting's too old to wrestle. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah. I mean, (laughs) yeah, I think we're all going to say that. Now, like I said, we don't know what we're going to expect from Sting here. I don't expect him to do much in this tag team match, to be honest. I mean, he might surprise us again. But I really don't see him, again, being involved a lot in this match. I see it, you know, Darby Allen again, mostly being, you know, in this match. If we're being realistic, if we're being, you know, honest, which, again, uh, I do think that mostly Darby Allen's going to be in this. Um, you know, and again, so it's hard to say what Sting's going to do, but it's going to, you know, again, be interesting. It's definitely, again, going to draw the viewers in, though, again, to see Sting having his first match in AEW. But, yeah, I think for me, I think, like I said, I think Sting and Darby Allen are going to win this. I just think the way that it's going, I, I do think, yeah, I just think it's a Sting's first match in AEW. 
And I think, you know, it's, yeah, I think they're going to be, you know, Brian Cage and that. And But I have, like, found, like, some of the promos, like, a little bit, you know, forced between Taz and, and Sting as well, though. Like, I think they, they need to, they needed to cut some of them promo, well, some of those promos they had with Taz and Sting as well during the build up to this. But I mean, yeah, like I think, you know, Gary, you know, said that there was a sloppy. Oh, no, I think it was sorry. It was uh, Anthony who said that there was a funny, you know, scorpion death drop that Sting tried to do. It looked like a squat. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that that's, uh, you know, I just I just hope again that, you know, for Sting, I just hope that he doesn't get injured in this match. I think that's the most important thing. But yeah, but I think he'll be protected here. And I think, you know, in the end, though, I think Sting and Darby Allen will win this. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to say Sting and Darby Allen will be uh, will beat Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Yeah, we we'll hand this over to Noel and Gary. I'm excited for this match. Uh, two weeks ago, when Sting came in, he did those splashes and that Scorpion Death drop. I popped so hard, I lost my mind. I was ballistic. You know, children are like, "Dad, who is that?" So we spent like hours on YouTube watching. Sting matches from like 20, 30 years ago, right? So last week he looked a little gas. You know, you know, yesterday he looked a little gas. So, you know, he's trying to do too much, but I got a feeling if they pace that match how I think they are, it's gonna be a great match. Sting is gonna do good. He's gonna take some bumps, he's gonna give some moves. Um, I think he has something to prove. I think he has something to prove. People are trying to categorize him like Goldberg. And I think he wants to get that, you know. I think he wants to be known as, okay, I'm better than Goldberg. I'm the king of WCW. Forget that other old bastard. Like, you know, I'm 61, and look at me. I can still do <laughs> <can still> <laughs> So, um, I just hope that they don't do too much with Sting. You know what I mean? They can still work a safe match, but don't have them taking power bombs on tables or don't have to do anything outlandish, you know. Just, just let him do his thing. Let him get a couple moves off. And, and, and go from there and really pace out that match, you know, for him to have his energy, have his breathing right and stuff like that as well. So, but I got a feeling that they're not going to win. I think Will Hobbs, our house Hobbs is going to come in or hook too many shenanigans, like eight against two, and they're not going to win. Derby and uh, Sting is not going to win. Okay. Uh, so you're basically picking um, Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. Yes. Yep. Age of start. Yeah. And for you, Anthony. Um, I think it's Darby Allen and Sting are gonna win because was, like Sting hasn't won a match in you know over a few years because he didn't win anything in WWE. So I think um they'll just have Sting get the win here. But the reason Sting is like it's a street fight, so it's gonna be a lot of brawling. So they're gonna try to protect Sting as much as possible in that aspect. Probably just a lot of punching, kicking, stomping, stuff like that. And yeah, like I said, Sting on Dynamite when he put you know the, the Scorpion Deathlock on Ricky Starks, he's in that that semi squat position. He couldn't hold it that long, and he fell like right on his ass. So um, yeah, he's 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 older. Um, he probably doesn't have the wind he has right now, so that's why they probably made it a street fight. But this whole storyline has just gone on way too long for me. It's it's been like you know it's felt like six months of the storyline going on of not much happening, just a lot of talking back yeah. and forth. Um, and you know, the back and forth between like Cameron said, between Taz and Sting's been kind of awkward. It has a lot of it's been kind of weird. It's just kind of there. It's kind of just them holding in a holding pattern because they have so much time in between, you know, when they, the feud started to when the pay-per-view was actually going to happen. So it's just been a long holding pattern of keeping these guys in the same vicinity with each other and talking back and forth, getting physical for the last couple of weeks. But for the most part, it's been a very drawn out story with not a ton happening yeah. and like it's a street fight, so like I said, it's gonna be a lot of brawling, punching, kicking, stuff like that. Um, Sting may take a big bump, but most of the big bumps are gonna be safe for uh, you know, Darby and Ricky Starks. They're probably the big bump takers in the match. Um, Brian Cage is gonna hit him with a power bomb, most likely on Sting. It's probably gonna happen because he did it once, he tried to do it again. He probably will hit that power bomb. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get injured, but again, he has he didn't win anything in WWE, so I think AEW is gonna want to just have him get a win in his first. And first, and one of his only few probably matches he will have with the company um, in terms of, you know, the in-ring. So I, I see Darby and Sting winning this one. Yeah. I'm I'm the same as, like, with Darby and Sting because they're, they're at the moment the fan favorites. And I agree, they did drag it on too long. I literally thought they were going to do something at full gear, if I recall, this way before that pay-per-view. 
I thought they were building towards that, and then winter's coming. No one thought steam was coming in into one of the storyline, but it's worked. Don't get me wrong, but it's been too long doing it. But as I say, it's professional wrestling. You do get long-winded storylines, and this one has been long overdue. But I could actually see Sting and Darby Allen getting this. I really can because at the moment, Darby's one of the fan favorites. Sting's pretty much. Proven that he's one of the fan favorites to have his since his debut. He's good. He basically crushed the website on pro wrestling tees for his merchandise. He basically sold out everything. He had to restart within a week or within a week or twenty four hours. I can't remember which because it was that high demand, and that just proves how over Sting is in the wrestling industry, considering how many marks are out there or sharks or whatever you want to class them as, disrespecting the likes of Sting. And it, it, I agree. I was worried for him when he took that power bomb towards the storyline, and he admitted it. it didn't tickle. He actually admitted that, which is a good thing. And when the fans were worried about him, see, you no, know, when the fans tweet him and see if he was all right and everything, that just proves how much connection he has with the fans. Still, even though he's a certain age, but age is just a number to me. And if he's willing to do it, like Tully Blanchard did this past week. He didn't do that much, but I feel like they're going to do similarities to where the likes of they did with the likes of the Cody and Shaq match. Even though they did certain things of that, but they took a back step with Cody and Shaq, they took pretty much a back step in that match and let the two women go at it. I feel like this is what's going to possibly happen with the likes of Ricky Starks and Darby Allen because they're two young, great talent. To see what they can do, and I just would love to see how they could actually elevate into this sort of street fight going forward. Would there be bloodshed, or who knows? End of the day, some of the, some way or form, it's going to be an entertaining match to whoever you know, to the young fans that watch AEW for the, the likes of Derby Allen, to the old school fans like myself, like probably you, Anthony, probably you, Cameron, or. And you got obviously Gary, he's proved it, he almost wet himself. So, but that's what I mean. It's such an eye opener to see what Sting can actually do. Sorry, Gary, I had to embarrass you this time, <laughs> but that's what I mean. It's just, I'm really looking forward to that match. I just hope Sting and Darby Allen get the victory in that. And then we fast forward to the last match before obviously we get them another main focus out of the way, obviously after this very match that we're going to be talking about, is the Explosive Bob Wire Death Match. This is one I feel that is going to be very controversial to the listeners, as well as obviously the people that I've got on this very podcast. Between no other than Kenny Omega and... Oh, brain fart then. Sorry, I do apologise. Kenny Omega and... John Moxley. How do you think this is going to go down? Answer. Um, yeah, I think Kenny Omega's going to hold on. I think it's going to be... Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the stipulation for this match. I just think it's kind of... It's just a ridiculous match. If you look at the FMW ones, um, they're not really good matches. It's just a lot going on. It's ridiculous explosions. I think it just takes away um, from the match itself. And... It, in the end, it can become a comical because their first match between Kenny and John uh, Moxley with the the unsanctioned when they took out that big bed of barbed wire, it was I mean it's a big spot, but in the end, it, it can end up being comical because it's just like why do you have that big ridiculous thing of barbed wire uh, ready as there to pull out? It's just I don't know. I I figure they can do uh you know a cage just keep it simple i don't know why you have to go with the whole exploding i mean it's probably moxley wants to do it um he seems like he's more into that kind of stuff i could i could have went with literally just a cage match or or something like that in general and 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 just done it with that maybe even just a ladder match you didn't have to do the whole multi-man ladder match you could have just saved the ladder match for moxley and omega keep it more simple i just think this is kind of like a ridiculous uh, stipulation to put on this match it may come off well it may not i think in the end it just for me you can only suspend your disbelief so much and at this point you really can't buy really buy into the type of matchup but i think kenny holds on um maybe we get some more impact stars or a, you know new japan star uh, showing up in this match because that's kind of cooled off a little bit the whole impact AEW thing um we could see the good brothers get involved in this match as well but i don't think it's going to be a straight out finish 
And I do still think John Ma- um, Kenny Omega will still be the AW champion afterwards. I'm for you, Gary. Gary? Oh, all right, yeah, with me, um, I'm not, like Anthony said, I'm not a fan of the stipulation. You know, I, I remember this, the first death match I watched was from FMW. It was, um, you know, fucking Cactus Jack. My uncle had it on, um, on VHS, you know, on tape. So I remember, yeah. I remember watching those matches growing up. I think Kenny Omega, he's trying to pay too much homage to Japan, you know? I know he, that's where he got famous in Japan, you know? Um, all Japan, they had their death matches as well. That's where some of the, you know, even the Joshi women had their matches there. Like Sumi Sakai and Aja Kong, they had some battles in like an exploding death match. So to bring that here, especially when people are getting upset with like GCW and CZW, you know, th- there's no point, and I'm not a fan of Kenny Omega's run at all in AEW. Coming from Japan and AEW, I'm just, you know, over the whole situation. Um, so with me, honestly, it, it doesn't matter to me. I think Kenny... Honestly, I, honestly, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I can see Kenny winning, keeping the, the title. I can see John winning it back. And for him to be a double champion, he'll have the IWGP US, and then he'll have the AEW World. So I can see him yeah. with the AEW World title, bringing it back to Japan, and somebody challenging them for the AEW title. And then next thing you know, they're having, you know, matches for people in, in New Japan and AEW challenging for, you know, as like a bridge, per se. But honestly, I don't know. I hope that they do more wrestling and just add some of those elements in it. But I don't want it to be too, like, you know, just too, just too over the top, you know, just. I want it to be more like an ECW match than like an FMW match, you know what I mean? Or I don't want it yeah. to stay. You know, if you're going to do it, just do it, you know. But either way, it's, it's a toss up for me. Um, uh, well, yeah, like like I said, uh, with this match, like you said, it's, it's definitely over the top. I think the stipulation is over the top here. And like like I said, I've never seen a barbed wire <laughs> death match before. So, I mean, yeah, like I said, you could definitely tell I think this is, you know, a John Moxley, you know, match. Like I said, like definitely that he's probably come up with the idea to probably have a de- you know, th- th- this match. But like, like, like Anthony said, I think this is too crazy. I think it's too, it's just, I just think it's too crazy. I just think that, again, it would have been better perhaps if they could have done a ladder match, like, like Anthony said, or, or maybe something, because I just think, I don't know, I just think it's too over the top. I think like they don't need, you know, to have like this, this, you know, this barbed wire, you know, death match. And uh, I don't know, but, in terms of, you know, making my prediction, I do think that if John Moxley, I believe, you know, doesn't beat Kenny Omega, I think this will be it for Moxley because of that promo he did cut two weeks ago on Dynamite where he was, you know, it was a very good promo and a very, you know, passionate promo as well. But basically, you know, saying, you know, to, to the fans really that have supported him over the years, you know, that this is... You know, but basically, like I said, it it came across to me like this might be it. I mean, this might be this is like all or nothing for me for John Moxley. But at the same time, you know, mm-hmm. Kenny Omega, I've not minded him as the AW World Champion. But again, it's, it's definitely been like with, you know, Gallows and Anderson, I think, you know, way too much, you know, for me. Like, I feel like he's had Gallows and Anderson always with him like now, you know, too much and I'm still confused with what's going on between them and the Young Bucks as well. Like, I, I don't know yeah. what you think, Finn, but, but like, yeah. So, yeah, but it's going to be, like it's like like uh, Gary said, it could be a toss-up here. You know, John Moxley could get, you know, the AW World Championship, the AW World Championship back from, from Kenny Omega. But I, I'm going to say, although, I, you, know, I, you know, I'm a John Moxley fan, but I think Kenny Omega is going to wind up retaining here. Uh, you know, I do think he's going to hold on. But, you know, this is probably again going to be their blow off match. This is the rubber match. 
But as I said, I just got no idea what we're going to expect here. But like you said, there's probably going to be interference from Gallows and Anderson that we'll probably see, uh, which, you know, is, is probably bound to happen. And maybe Ray Phoenix might even get involved, who knows. But, you know, and like, like you said, maybe, you know, we might see some more New Japan guys or, you know, Impact guys getting involved, which would be cool. But, you know, but yeah, I'm going to say Kenny Omega, you know, will end up winning, you know, retaining the AW World Championship. So, yeah, I'm going to say that, you know, I think Kenny's going to win. And Moxley, I, I don't know what's going to happen for him next, but... We'll see where he goes from here. You know, we'll see, but I'll say Kenny. Oh, yeah. Uh, the thing is, with me, I think John Moss is actually going to pretty much get this because don't forget, it's not nope, when Kenny and May go to impact rest and still to get whatever the pay-per-view was and people about that him if the likes of rich one decides to come to help the likes of because of his zw past as well the likes of uh john moxley getting the victory in this because that's the way i could see it actually happening it, It'd be perfect way to do unfinished business between them two because if you're still interwinding Impact Wrestling with um, AEW or you interwind in New Japan Pro Wrestling, like the, the about New Japan Pro Wrestling, I just feel like they still need to un- interwind, even though you got the likes of Gallows and Anderson. I feel on my preference that I feel like the likes of Rich One could come jump ship and help the likes of John Moxley out on this. To set up a continue on the feud between Rich One and Kenny Omega going forward because he still holds a grudge because obviously the beat beat down the yeah, yeah, and they could face each other at the next pay per view. And that's just my honest th- opinion. And then we'll go on to the last match I want to talk about is Young Bucks versus Chris Jericho and MJF. And do you think this is going to go down, Cameron? Uh, yeah, so I've been like, you know, quite interested in this, but like, I don't know, this could be like, I think this might be one of the better matches on the card, if if I'm being honest. I think this match, you know, again, up there with Darby Allen and Sting's match, I think this has got, you know, some interest because, uh, you know, this is the first time that Chris Jericho and MJF now are going after the AEW World Tag Team Championships. But, uh, but yeah, I think this will be interesting, you know, uh, you know, obviously, I think the Young Bucks, you know, I think, you know, in that Battle Royal, which was a few weeks ago, if they won, you know, they could choose who they wanted to face. And, uh, you know, it would have been cool again if it was, you know, Gallows and Anderson, you know, maybe. But, you know, but uh, yeah, but it's been interesting. It was quite funny as well, like the beat down they did on uh, Papa Buck as well. That was pretty funny uh, in the build up as well. The other week on Dynamite, I kind of found that quite funny, but but uh, and the way they just sort of you know ran off and all that but but i honestly think that i think sammy guevara is going to have a part to play in this match i think there's a very good chance i think sammy guevara is gonna possibly run in and maybe cost you know i think it's probably going to be because he's obviously again got tension with mjf and he's left now the inner circle so i think he could play a role in this match i mean gallows and anderson could maybe get involved as well but yeah, I think what will probably happen. Yeah, I think the young bucks. So I think are going to are going to end up retaining though. I think, but it wouldn't surprise me. I, I mean, it would be cool again to see you know a title change. Well, to see what they could do with Jericho and MJF being AW World Tag Team Champions. But I think that maybe I think most likely we could see Sammy Guevara get involved in this. But yeah, so I'll, I'll say I think the young bucks will end up retaining and I think they're going to drop them to somebody else, like maybe private party or maybe, you know, someone else down the line. But, but yeah, so that's what I'm going to say. Yep. And for you, Cap, um, Anthony. Um, 
Yeah, I'd probably just go with the Young Bucks as well. I don't think MJF and Chris Jericho right now are going to be tag team champions. I think they still have their feud with um, Sammy Guevara, and we'll see how that ends up playing out. I don't think the tag team titles will be involved in there. I think the run for the Bucks as tag team champions has been pretty lackluster. I think they made a big mistake by taking the belts off of FTR so quickly and giving them back to the Bucks. I don't think it was the best choice or the best route to go with. I think FTR was the better team to have as tag team champions in the current moment. And it's, I think it's going to be one of the better matches on the show, maybe the match of the night. I think it'll play off really well. Uh, if they don't go too heavy with interference, um, we may see a lot of interference throughout the most of the night, so I hope they don't go too heavy with it. I think Sammy will get involved. Um, I hope the Good Brothers do not get involved in this match because it is kind of awkward as to whether they're okay with the Bucks or they're not because they helped them this past Wednesday on Dynamite, but previously they had issues with them along with Kenny having issues with the Bucks. So it's it's weird storytelling by AEW at the moment. Um with all this, I think they're just kind of going by, you know, shooting at the hip at this time at this moment in time when it comes to all that stuff. I just think, you know, I think the Bucks are gonna hold on, but I, I'm not a fan of them being champions currently. I think they may just be waiting and going back to FTR versus the Bucks. Could see Jurassic Express make a run for the titles as well, um private party. But I think yeah, I think in this moment in time, it's best to keep it on the Bucks because, you know, MJF and Chris Jericho have so much turmoil inside the inner circle. So I think the Bucks hold on to it here. Yeah. I'm for you, Gary. Um, me, I'm going with um, Young Bucks lose the titles. You know, uh, Young Bucks, mm. they're historic. You know, they've had plenty of time with the titles. And um, let's be real, they, they could book themselves again at any time, you know. I think the Young Bucks right now in their career, they're a little bit banged up. For them, the chase for the titles is kind of more of their the way I want to see them kind of go. So, like, Jericho has it. Jericho MTF has it. It's automatic rating. People are going to tune in just to see what they do with the belt. All that, all that as well. And also, they've been kind of teasing new tag teams, you know, between, like, you know, they have the quote-unquote little four horsemen, you know, they kind of did, you know, with, you know, Shaw Spears, FTR, and, um, yeah. yeah, you know, the, the little, you know, everybody has all of the factions, so they're they're kind of rebooting their tag team division, so I think instead of having everybody chase the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks could, could get in, go back to the bottom, Look at some of these new tag teams, have some new storylines, and have MJF and Jericho have the belt. Yeah. Have, 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 have the belt for a while until they get the tag teams like kind of solidified and figure out who they're going to team with who. I did like what Cameron said as far as Sammy coming in. Sammy's going to interfere, you know, but eventually Sammy's going to find somebody for him to tag with in order to take the belts on MJF and Jericho somehow, some way. Uh, but I do have MJF and Jericho winning the title. Yeah, that's what that's what I mean. It's just one of those things. It's could, like with their tag team division when they've actually highlighted it. The last Revolution, it's one of the best male tag team matches I've ever seen in recent times. They can't. I don't think it will live up to that expectation, but it could be proven wrong. But I just it's like when guy he could actually. Um, the books retaining because I think that Sam is going to be involved there some way or form because it's going to probably attack MJF for the like a blind sort of thing when the ref's not looking. So it sort of spills up the feud between them two even more because it's been died off recently. And then out of the blue, that Sammy comes out, attacks MJF, and screws them out and the tag team. And sets up a match probably down the line for them to maybe a pay per view or dynamite. But I feel like them two will face off at possibly a pay per view more than dynamite. And that's just my honest opinion. But I feel like the books are going to pretty much lose this match. Sorry, when this with the last is being involved in this sort of angle still. I feel like he could be working with the books by. Uh, Hangman Adam Page figure when they were in the elite, he could be a part of the elite because end of the day, what elite and obviously Sammy Guevara doing his vlogging channel as well as obviously the likes of the Young Bucks doing theirs. 
you get two sort of people watching the background, so you could actually use that as the aspect. It's so wide open between this match, but I feel the books are going to pretty much retain the championship. Right, the main focus that everyone is speculating already around the internet today, I've actually seen it pretty much on left field. Yeah, Paul White came on to Dynamite on Wednesday night. And I tell you what, when I actually saw that shirt and that slogan, no more BS, that was funny. That's a subliminal dig at Vince as well as obviously no more Big Show as well. So you can take it on on the chin how you want it. But end of the day, it was comical. Love the way he actually came in, made the, made the crowd pop, which is great, which I've kind of missed with certain wrestling companies. But the interesting speculation of it, of him saying he's going to be making an announcement, a revolution of their new signing. Do you think they're going to leave this last or middle of the pay-per-view around that time? But who do you think it's going to be? I'll hand this over to Gary. Gary? Um, I, I have no idea. Um, I know we you know, we talked about earlier, you know, I think somebody from New Japan, you know, but I'm, I'm trying to think of people who, you know, Paul White has had ties with. It's a ladder match. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have no clue. Like, uh, if there's a legend, it's a ladder match. Maybe now I'm going to jump out the window. This is something I wanted to say earlier. If it's a ladder match, you talk about a legend who they signed. New Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new, new Jack. No, <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, He's definitely not know. a future Hall of Fame in that industry. <laughs> right. I, honestly, I have no clue. Uh, I, I, I legit don't know who's a free agent who can still work. I, I, I have no idea. I'm trying to think of people who, who've been in ladder matches before. And, and I, I can't think of anybody that sticks out. You know, of course, you know, people think CM Punk, but with him, it's either shit or get off the pot. I don't know what he wants to do. I, I can't trust the, the pick CM Punk, but um, I have no idea. And for you, Cameron? Yeah, I'm the same with Gary. I've really got no clue, but I do think that possibly they could have a tie-in, you know, with the big show, like you said, like, Somebody, again, who's probably, like I said, known the big show for years. Well, they've been, you know, obviously friends for years. But, again, it could be, again, like someone who we just don't expect. Or it could be something else. I mean, it would be good to see something outside the box. That's what I would say. But I really just, again, it's, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, it's, it's fascinating. But... Yeah, I honestly don't know again what what he's going to do, Paul White. You know, like like Gary said, this, this it's open really. Um, it's a tough one to say, but yeah, uh, I'm on the fence really on this as well. I, I really don't know. Um, I, I've really it's kind of a long shot. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm the same with Gary. I, I'm not really that sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to be CM Punk. I don't think it's going to be him. But yeah, man, I I just don't know. I I really can't think of who could be in this ladder match. I really don't know. I'm going to say someone probably from New Japan, but yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. And for you, Anthony, what do you think? Um, I think if it's not somebody absolutely huge and massive in name, then he's going to be in the ladder match. Um, but again, uh, the tease was it's somebody that's Hall of Fame caliber. So it's very vague. You don't know if it's a guy who's older and just coming in and he already has a Hall of Fame you know, pedigree or if it's somebody that just has the talent or has been, you know, 
proclaimed as a future Hall of Fame guy. So there's a lot of ways you can go with it. I mean, it could be Christian from WWE, but again, they're running a very thin line here because, you know, they're doing this to get more people interested in the pay-per-view, obviously, and buy more more pay-per-view buys. So either way they'll go, they'll get more pay-per-view buys. But if they go with somebody from WWE, they're going to get stuck with that whole thing of, oh, they're just a, a company full of old WWE guys. If they go with somebody that's kind of lackluster, people are going to be upset by it. Like, oh, all this just for, you know, so-and-so person. So, I mean, they can go with guys like a guy like Christian, uh, obviously CM Punk could be a guy that'll probably like break the internet type thing. But you know, I'm I, I've been I've soured on CM Punk in, over the last few years, so I'm not excited about seeing him coming back. Um, could see somebody like a Tanahashi come from New Japan, you never know. Um, somebody like that, like a Hall of Fame guy like that, show up there. Maybe he wants to you know try his hand in the U.S. and see how it is. But if it's a guy with massive name value, he kind of has to be pushed immediately. So him being in the ladder match with a guy with massive name vi- value doesn't make a ton of sense because he's most likely not going to win it. And and you know, it depends on how they how they go with it. It's just it, they're they're running a thin line here. They really are. It, you know, it, they they can go one of two ways with it. And one way would be ex WWE guy, which probably get a lot of people talking trash about the product and how they're just mostly ex WWE guys. And or it could be somebody that's just not not as you know a big of a name that people are gonna get super excited about. Um, yeah, so I I don't know who it is. I, I my pick would probably have to be like somebody like Christian. I think they'll play it safe and get a guy like Christian in there because he's he came back at the Rumble, really hasn't done anything since. Um, so WWE doesn't seem like they're gonna bring him back. So they may try to counter edge on the other programming with Christian on one, something like that, or yeah. a, a big time New Japan guy. Is the only thing I can really see happening because I think that'll really like um, jumpstart the whole Forbidden Door conversation thing again. So that, that that's my choice, either Christian or a New Japan guy, maybe Tanahashi. But I think the guy will be older in age. I I don't think it's going to be a, a you know a young guy who's been proclaimed as like a future hall of famer i think they'll go the older route yeah that's an interesting pick really inter- i was really surprised that you said christian but it's like when um who was it was it john Moxley recently in it when he turned around and said that he won't mind christian working in, in the likes of yeah AEW. yeah i saw that yeah yeah, and then when people are like thinking punk, the only reason why because one he was trolling only a week ago, and two weeks before that he was saying that he won't mind matches with such and such. So you don't know which way punk's gonna go with it. It'd be interesting to bring him in. Even though none of you guys have said it, but it's actually not allowed to make one or two people that would be sensational. In it. My first pick, my reason was person like we mentioned before we're going on record. Another man is COVID 19. travel could the last. She obviously continued Will Osprey because that is. Yeah, she makes him life in his early days. I followed his pretty much his career on the independent scene. I haven't watched uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. That, that's my own uh, preference. The reason why is because before the, I, I'm looking where they're actually going on the UK deal sort of thing. I don't know if they confirmed or anything, but I would love to see what Will Ospreay could do in that ladder match with those opponents because I think he will steal the show. Like Everyone loves what he can actually do. If you've ever watched him live, he's a treat and a half. I can styles when he was young still got the photo on the instagram when i met him and pete dunn on the same card it's a weird situation when he stole the show between him and mark andrews i can just imagine what he can actually do on that one and another one will be interesting one kota kabushi that's the only name from the cruiserweight classic tournament the wwe People were blown away with it, and he kept refusing a call. Huawei in AEW, 
all in back in 2000. Uh, how do you feel about those breaks? Um, I know with me, like, there's no way New Japan is going to let any of their champions over. Like, Tanahashi, he has their never open title. Um, he retained it mm -hmm. against the Great Open yeah. last weekend. Kota Ibushi, even though they're doing things with the, they kind of scrapped the IC title, they're unifying the title. There's no way they're going to let him go over, you know, as well. Um, like I said earlier, if there's anybody from Japan coming, I will say, I would think it would be Minoru Suzuki. He could just go in there and be a brawler, you know, smack people around, hit people with ladders, and, you know, do stuff like that. Um, I do like Osprey, but Osprey, they're, they're really yeah. pushing him right now with the, with the, uh, with the Empire over there. Um, if there's anybody in Anybody else in Japan, I would think. I would think of yeah. um, maybe you know, Ishii. Well, Ishii's feuding with Jay White. He has a program with Jay White right now. I would think of of like a, a Goto, yeah. somebody who's, who's good, but not good where they won't miss. But I'm thinking it could be like an ECW mm -hmm. guy, maybe like a Rhino or a Tommy Dreamer. I know he just had that title match against Rich Swan Impact, but I could picture Tommy Dreamer mm -hmm. showing up in a better man or, or like a Rhino. Would be interesting. I have a pick. Yeah, I was going to... I have a pick. Oh. I was going to say RVD. <laughs> but that's, that's not a bad name, actually, to be fair, because he can do well in that ladder match. That would be but interesting. I think of him for some reason. Yeah, I mean, he could go... It, well, we know what he can do in ladder matches, and and a big show's known him, and, yeah. and, he's, and he's Hall of Fame calibre, but... You know, like Anthony alluded to. Uh, but. I like to pick RBD. I like so, that. It's so wide open. It really is. That is a nice pick. Because he can... I'm glad I threw well, his name in there. Which is a good thing. Yeah, I'm, that's what I mean. It's like, you've just come out with that one. I did not think of RBD at all, for some reason. You stumped me there, Cameron. I'll give you that. But anyway, guys, I mean, um, as you were going to say. Could it be himself? Could Big Show be himself? Say, hey, not only did I sign to do the show, but I also signed to be, get in the ring. Maybe it could be himself. <laughs> Full <of> everybody. <laughs> or besides Lloyd, probably signed Shaq. Oh, God. Uh, that's what I mean. It's so wide open. It's screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I think it just ha it has to be somebody that like people are going to be excited about. That's why I think it just has to be something like that. It has to be like an impact person, somebody to make an impact on the show. I think it'll just get booed out of the building if it's not, or it just get yeah. you know torn apart online. Because like why why do it the way you did it if it was just going to be kind of like a swerve in the end? Yeah. I don't know. Like, to me, it might, it might have a bad effect on like the show itself. As, and if they put that in the ladder match, it may be like a, like a depending on what ladder match takes place on the card, it may hurt the rest of the show afterwards. Yeah, that's the thing is with me. I was thinking of another name just out of the blue now, A.R. Fox. He deserves it, hands down. All he's been doing is independence, and he deserves a shot. He deserves to be in a company right now. You know, there's so many names that I could name, be here all night, and so as you guys would be. But <laughs> it's like so. But when the thing is with Paul White, I think he's like saying Hall of Fame caliber, just trolling people, thinking one thing, and then you get another. You never know. But it is what it is. But anyway, guys, I'm about to wrap up the show. Thanks ever so much to my guests coming on. Obviously, I will give you all the descriptions, and I hope you guys enjoy being on. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate you yeah. having a, having me on again. Yeah, thank no you. Problem. Thank you, Gav. Until thank they, you, Gavin. No worries. I, and I really appreciate being on. Everyone, support everyone that's been on this podcast. This channel. No worries. I'm um, just now. Because if it weren't for them, we would not be talking here to talk about professional wrestling and enjoying what we do. Because at the end of the day, wrestling's a family. I enjoy having people on. 
the likes of Cameron to say this is his very first podcast, very very first one. I can't stress you enough. I want to be. I think he'll do it now because he's eased into it. Obviously, support Anthony for his wrestling. The support is. I can't stress you enough, guys. Support you supporting me. Continue listening and obviously everything that I've done on social media. I can't thank these guys for coming on and being early evening United States time. But end of the day, we're one big happy family that enjoys rest. Next time, guys. Catch you guys soon.